three, two. So the, the uh, title for the video, it's, it's not really clickbait. It's a real question, right? Can trans women or are trans women better than women? Before we get into all that, I want to open up the show today with a, a quick video touching on what we have been speaking about here on the show for some time. I, for those of you guys that have been coming here religiously, hey, listen, I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, you have no idea how much that means to me for all, any of you guys to take time out of your day. I know everybody has busy lives and things to do. And for you to come out here and, uh, you know, click on the video and watch us and, and entertain us. Uh, thank you. I, I cannot just, you know, I, I cannot thank you enough. Also, if you don't mind, you know, liking the video and sharing it and, and commenting, uh, I, I would appreciate even more. So let's start with the video today, right? Um, and like I was saying, some of you guys may be tired of, of seeing this whole thing, but I, I, I just very quickly before we move on to the main topic. All right. So here there's an article, okay, from ABC7. Uh, title for those of you guys listening on the podcast, boy rescued after he see, says he was abandoned by group near Mexico border. So check out this video. And again, for those of you guys uh, on listening on the podcast, essentially, we're about to click into a video where there's a CBP officer driving down what it looks to be a very isolated um, road. And it's it's an off road for that matter. So it's not like a, a paved road or paved road or anything like that from what I remember. Um, but anyways, he's driving down and he's filming and he sees at a distance, uh, a little figure, which obviously we end up finding out it's a little boy, but I want you guys to hear what he says, um, in Spanish. And then again, for those of you guys listening on the podcast, I'll try to translate it in English. So right now he's just driving again off this, this road. Um, and then he's coming across the little boy here on the side of the road he's getting off the vehicle right and he's walking and the boy little boy's walking towards him as well and then here's where they start engaging in conversation Dude, I'm uh, I got very emotional earlier, okay, uh, because of you know I I, I do take it personal. All right. Um, not because he's Hispanic, not because um, or, or, or Latino or whatnot, not because um, he's a boy and I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a guy. No, nothing to do with any of that shit. It's because I have children, man. And one of my my kids is near the age of that little boy. And just to think that some some parent out there, some guardian or whatever, uh, decided to put this boy in the hands of a group, as the little boy said, by the way, for those of you guys listening on the podcast, essentially he's crying. The little boy looks no older than maybe what, Josh, 10 or something like that. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, right? Maybe a little younger. You know, he's obviously disoriented. He's he's pretty much crying, saying I was with the group, right? And they essentially just abandoned me out here. They left me out here. And, you know, he's obviously near the, the U.S. border or already in the U.S., to where CBP came across the little boy and, and picked them up, right? Whether it was maliciously, where they, they knew that the little boy would eventually would come across a CBP agent and then they would go through the process that we've been talking about, which then they'll corral him in some freaking cage here in the U.S. Or they, they maybe left them, you know, um, because maybe he was dead weight to them. So maybe they did it maliciously instead of uh, for the boy's own benefit. They're like, oh, screw the little boy, let's leave. Whatever the reason, honestly, I don't give a flying F. I'm just earlier, man, I did. I, I got I was talking to my wife. I got all emotional because, you know, who wouldn't, man? 
who I mean, what what person on this earth wouldn't right to see a kid? You know, when you come across videos that are of actual adults, you know, people like you and I, Josh, you know, in our maybe twenties, thirties, even forties, whatever. You're like, you know what, man, mm -hmm. you're an adult. You make your own decisions. You should know better, right? Than, than to put yourself in those in that situation. And if you're doing it out of desperation, hey, man, all we can say is good luck. Be careful. But this is a child, right? This is a child, man. I mean, how how can anyone sit there and be like, oh well, pues ni modo. Ah, man. Yeah. I mean, I I don't know. I mean, it's it it's it, it's left me speechless. I don't know what to say to that. I mean. It, it does happen it, it you know it does and like we've been saying in f other episodes right it's like every single time like what else what else are we going to hear you know we joke about it right it, it, i i i how i god i hope it never happens where they they have some video out there that we come across right that we end up reporting that newer newborns are just left but this is how it's getting right kids being thrown over kids being just abandoned man and it looked maybe like a like a really isolated area maybe like a desert i don't know what exactly the location is but it's just out there man like i i i i am that kind of parent that i would freaking panic freak out and i don't know what i would do if my kid and inside a store full of people would freaking go missing for a few minutes let alone in some remote part right where anything can happen out there literally worry about anything from well animals to to really really bad human beings out there just you know predators just god man imagine if this would have been someone else that came across this little boy and not not a patrol officer filming to get it out there to the world if it would have been again like a predator or something right so i just wanted to share with you guys because i've been getting some dms i don't know guys please comment on the video i get sometimes dms whether it be from family members friends and even acquaintances that uh that follow me it's like just commenting on the video some people have disagreed with me and, and they'll send me a dm you're not gonna embarrass me you're not turning your back on me by commenting if you disagree with me i had a i'm not gonna call anybody out specifically but i had someone dm me saying dude it's you know it's not all that bad the media makes it worse in terms of you know when speaking about this whole border crisis that we've been talking about it is bad right and i replied exactly what i'm saying here it is bad just because you choose to paint a different picture in your head to maybe make you feel better, right? It doesn't mean that it's not bad. I mean, how many more videos can I come across and show people to show that it is bad? And yes, I am going to blame the leadership in this country. I'm sorry if he's your precious Lord Biden that can do no wrong. Just like people used to call out, you know, uh, Republicans when they used to praise Trump and he was Lord Trump at the time, I will do the same because unlike some and a lot of people in this country, I have no effing bias with any of these mother effers. All right. I will call them out. I don't care if they're Republican or Democrat. This is a crisis, right? What do we need to come across? A, a, a mountain of children that were maybe tortured and killed and for us to be like, oh my God, this is pretty bad. Let's Now let's put a pressure on Biden. No, I don't, I don't want to get to that point. I hope God knock on wood it never does right but anyways i'm getting all excited all over again let's move on to the next story all right and for that we need to go to the a few articles that we have to to really explain why we say or why i am saying i'm not going to put words in josh's mouth um uh, the question mm -hmm. are transgender women better than women and at the end i'll explain why the title but okay for now this article here says that 261 transgender prisoners request transfer under new california and it, it's not new I, that already doesn't say new but i know it's a new law new california law 255 to a women's prison okay so the article goes on to say that uh 261 california state prisoners have requested transfer to a facility that house the opposite gender since a new law that's what see this is why new is new new law went into effect on january 1st and 255 of them have requested to move from a male to a female corrections facility. The law SB 132 provides uh, that a prisoner who self-identifies, right, who is transgender, non-binary, or intersex must be addressed in, excuse me, move the mouse, addressed in a manner consistent with their incarcerated individual's gender's identity. Okay, so what essentially it says in a nutshell is, hey, if Jonathan tomorrow gets 
put in prison in California for whatever reason, right? And I happen to say that I identify as a woman. Well, I can request to be transferred over to a woman's prison. Now, before you come out and throw your all your mitts, anybody coming out and, 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 and just absolute, I don't know, blind defense of the transgender community, know that I'm not here to mark the transgender community as evil. I'm not here to put them down. I'm here simply to state some obvious facts, right? Like things that happen in prison that you hear, and we've even talked about on this show, right? Uh, like the four letter R word, if you know where I'm going with that, happen in both prisons. Now, what do you think might happen when you start mixing male and female prisoners, even those that claim that they are transgender? Now, let me remind everybody that we're talking about prisoners, many of which are in there under some petty crimes, but many of them are in there because they should be in there. They're con artists, they're criminals, and they, you know, there's a reason they're in prison, right? They, they, they didn't care to break the law like the rest of us that are law-abiding citizens, unlike us, they didn't care. So with all that said, they get this law and they're going to play the system. A lot of them already know how to play the system. Right. They're like, yeah, screw it, dude. I'll let my hair grow out. I'll wear freaking makeup and uh, whatever, 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 whatever I need to tell you to get my, you know, my ass over there. Right. I'll act the part in everything. So that is my first uh, critical thought. Right. I don't look at this blindly as I, well, it, rightfully so. They should because I'm going to victimize them because, hey, maybe they are being uh, molested or doing whatever they're doing to them in a male's prison, let them be more safe with women. I don't know how much of that can be true. Okay. And I don't know how much I'm willing to just blindly accept the fact that there are not going to be people that are going to openly abuse this new law. That's, that's my stance, at least on this article, when it comes to prisoners and the transgender community in prison. So it, it's an interesting one. Cause, um, uh... I guess, like you said, a lot of people are just going to go with the, with their initial knee-jerk reaction of like, yeah, let's let's just let's just let them do it. It's fine. Just let them do it. It's absolutely fine. I think in actuality, doing nothing about it is wrong as well. But also doing something about it, which is the A B C kind of linear kind of way of thinking about it, is also wrong. What we should do is probably actually think about making a new prison system, okay? So this new prison system will not just be male, will not just be female, but also have a trans prison. Now, it sounds like an extreme idea. It sounds like, you know, a lot of taxpayer money and all that kind of thing. But it's the same thing. It's equality, at is equality, because a transgender woman biologically is not the same as a woman, as we're going to see later in this video or podcast or, you know, a little bit later. But I think that's probably the smartest and e like fairest thing to do above anything. It's the fairest thing to do if it's equally bad for everybody. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. So here's here's what I'll say. OK, you, you brought up a good point. Um. If we're going to go ahead now, right, and start adding more more colors to the rainbow, well, guess what? We have to give names to these colors, right? What I'm, where, I'm, where am I going with this analogy? If we're going to start adding more genders that people identify with or more possibilities or, or whatever, however you want to decipher everything that's going on between the argument about sex and gender and identification and all that. Okay. Well, guess what? We have to start opening up the idea that it is, like you just said, it kind of costs money to be able to mm -hmm. adequately, that's a key term here, okay? Balance everything that comes with opening up to saying, okay, well, people can now self-identify, as the article said, and, I'm, and that's, it's, pretty, it's pretty true to, the, to, the, to what the law says. If you self-identify, meaning not a doctor identifies you or a psychologist or, or someone, right, with a, quote, authority. No, you just self-identify as as being of, of this new gender, it's going to come across, it's going to come with a lot of baggage. It's not just, ah, let, let this person identify as however they want to identify. 
And uh, yeah, and let's move on. No, it comes with a a, a, a bunch of, um, you know, have to do's in terms of the government, meaning have to, like you said, maybe create a special unit, right? Where we don't have to place him, whether you're looking at it, at it from a risk on in male population or risk to women because they're going to be in woman population. It's going to be somewhere in the middle, right? Uh, is it more work? Is it more money? Is it more expenses, more resources? Absolutely. Absolutely. But that's what that this comes with when you a, a, when lawmakers decide to enact and, and activate a, such a law, right? For everyone. So you bring up a, a, a good point. You can't just, and that's what my whole analogy, you just gonna add colors to the rainbow and say, yeah, but we don't want to really go through more work. They're just there. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to label them. We don't want to share them. We know. I mean, you're going to create more, more has to be done. Okay. So let's move on to the next mm -hmm. article. All right. That we have here to show why there is a, a clear difference between a transgender woman and a woman and why I'll tell you guys now. You, know, you don't have to wait to the end. In my opinion, it's not the same. It is not the same. Listen, much love to any transgender woman out there. This video is not to put you down. This video is just to outline my beliefs that I'm sorry, ma'am, you are not the same as a woman that was born biologically women. No disrespect to you. I think you need to be and want and it should be whatever it is that you identify as. Go ahead. Be you. Be happy but you, it's not the same. So let's go into some of those articles, okay? So the first one we have on here, because the website uh, doesn't have a very uh, good uh, development, I'm gonna have to move the, the bar here. For those of you guys listening, here's the title. When transgender fighter uh, Fallon Fox, unless it's Fallon Fox, if you're talking in Spanish, Fallon Fox broke her opponent's skull in an MMA fight. Now, there's a lot of like, oh, uh, mids and arguments as to how the fight went down. And, you know, they're trying to even blame the, the female fighter as not being properly trained, you know, and that's why this accident happened. And that's fine. You can you can have all those arguments. To me, it's not it is it's it's not they're not valid. What's happened here, as the article says, is Fallon Fox, the first MMA fighter to come out as a transgender once fractured the skull of her opponent in an MMA fight in 2014. Fox was challenging uh, Tamika Brents at CCCW, which is Capital City Cage Wars event, where the 45-year-old fighter brutally defeated her American opponent. The fight lasted just over two minutes after the referee was forced to halt the contents. contest. Excuse me. Um, Brent received seven staples in her head and also suffered a concussion. She was overpowered by Fox to an extent that her, even her uh, orbital bone inside her skull was fractured. There's videos out there. I'm not going to play it, but you can imagine it. I mean, it just someone with your fist just hitting someone else's head, right? No, understand that there are, there are different dynamics that there are, there are factual. It's science that exists in the anatomy of a man and a woman, right? That played a part here. Bone density is one of them. Do you, you want to ignore science? That's completely up to you, right? Go ahead. That, that's your choice to say, uh, you know, and that's not true. You know, um, I don't know. For whatever reason, you want to you wanna ignore that. But th those, are, those, are, those, are, those are facts. What, what else? Muscle density. All right? How, how a man's body naturally just deals with muscle. Now, even if a woman, a trans woman, excuse me, was under any kind of, um, um, I don't know what they call them, suppressors or hormones, you know, for, for uh, um, testosterone, it doesn't completely eliminate some of these facts, right? So many people have weighed on here, including doctors and professionals, and said, yeah, I mean, you see men fighting all the time in MMA and they hit each other and rarely do you have fractures of this nature, right? Because, you know, equal force sort of thing. But when you're talking about a, 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 a trans woman who used to be a man, who, by the way, for many years trained as a man, go, go and look at Bayon Fox uh, profile yourself online, and then swapped over and said, hey, I'm going to go ahead and fight with women now. 
not equal force. Okay. Not equal force. Look it up yourself. Do your research yourself. All right. So this is the first example. I want to go into another one very quickly, and then we'll go into comments. Uh, frustrating and disheartening. This article says from the daily si uh, signal, three girls losing two biological males in track announced lawsuit. So this one actually comes with a video. All right. That was why we don't have to read so much of the article. So let's go into that video, that, that video very quickly here to just check it out and see exactly what this whole case is about. It's about four minutes long. Um, there's not too much to describe for those of you guys listening in the podcast. What you're listening is essentially it tells the whole story that we're that we're discussing here. So let's play it now. I started running track in middle school. At first, it was just for fun, something to do after school. But by high school, I began to appreciate the beauty of the sport, what's required both mentally and physically to succeed. The intensity, the discipline, the precision. To compete at a high level on track takes years of dedication to a single goal. There's nothing more satisfying than crossing that finish line first. But running is only satisfying and all that sacrifice is only worth it if the race is fair. In my freshman year, the night before a big race, my parents told me that a biological male who identifies as a girl would be competing in my race the next day. On the bus heading to the event, our coach also gave me the news. I didn't have much time before the race to process what this might mean, but I had plenty of time to process it afterward. And for the next few years of my high school career, as I watched again and again, First one, then two, biological males dominate girls' track events in our state. It started from what might have seemed like a fair idea. The Connecticut Athletic Association decided that males who believe they are girls can compete against girls. But beliefs don't change biology, and the result has been anything but fair. Since 2017, the two biological male runners who have competed in girls' high school track in Connecticut have won 15 women's track championship titles. Titles that were held by nine different girls in 2016. Four of those state championship titles should have been mine. They've also shattered girls' track records. Those two biological males now hold 17 all-time individual women's meet records in Connecticut. As a result, the rest of us have lost over 85 opportunities to qualify for higher levels of competition, losing scholarship opportunities, titles, and wider recognition. I remember the 55 meter indoor track competition in the 2019 state championship. I finished in 7.23 seconds. That was the top time among biological girls, but third overall. The male who finished second in the race clocked in at 7.01 seconds. The new women's state champion, also a male, broke the all time record for the event, finishing in 6.95 seconds a time that would have earned that same runner 140th place in the men's 55 meter dash that year. It's hard to explain the feeling that no matter how talented you are, no matter how hard you train, how much you practice, how much you want to win, you've already lost before the competition even begins. Losing builds character, but only if the competition is fair. I and two of my fellow female runners, Selena and Alana, sued the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference in federal court with the help of Alliance Defending Freedom. We challenged our policy because it unfairly discriminates against us girls. Studies have shown that male athletes consistently achieve results 10 to 20% higher than comparably fit and trained women across almost all athletic events. Even when males suppress testosterone, some of men's physical advantages never go away like greater lung capacity, larger skeletal size, and greater bone density. In 1972, Congress passed Title IX, a civil rights law that was designed, in part, to stop discrimination against girls and women and to provide them with equal athletic opportunities. But now, in the name of progress, Connecticut and other states are undoing all of that. For the first time in nearly 50 years, they are tilting the playing field against women. That's not progress, and that's not fairness. It's discrimination. When the law reflects real biological differences between males and females, that's a good thing. When it doesn't, girls like me suffer the most harm. All right. So, whew, a lot to unpack. All right. Let's go to that overview. Okay. First of all, that video pretty much reiterate everything that I, that I said, right? About the, the, the physical anatomy differences between a male and a female even after you can consider 
all the transitions and, and all the medical procedures, including uh, supplements that somebody can take, right, to either become a trans man or a trans woman. In this particular case, we're talking about trans women, okay? And w- what they can do to essentially still outperform women, even after all those transitions, and how it affects many women, right? In this case, it's a young lady, for those of you guys listening on the podcast, who, you know, has, is the telling her story about, you know, running uh, or doing track, excuse me, in high school. And there were there were two trans um, ladies that outdid pretty much everyone in her class, including including her, right? Which begs the question here, right? Should trans women compete with trans women? Now, let me also leave very clearly that if a trans woman competes with a woman because a woman, a biological woman, wants to compete with a trans woman or even wants to compete with men and you know they're like yeah bring him on by all means do you do you (laughs) you know if you fear yourself that in any type of sport you are able and you are and you are more than open to competing with with anyone regardless of their gender or or identifier go ahead do you like i I am not opposed to that right ronda rousey wants to come out and say you know what i'll fight i don't know mcgregor I don't know that I would agree with that. <laughs> you know, hey, be careful. Everybody has seen, you know, McGregor fight. But hey, Rondo says I'll take that risk by all means, right? It is very different. For sure. Right? It is very different than 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 McGregor saying, Oh, I'm a woman. Get me get me in the cage with you know Rhonda. And, you know, Rhonda's like, I I don't know. Like, and there's like the peer pressure, there's the social pressure really of saying, Wow, you're gonna discriminate against now McGregor who's a lady and you don't want to fight with her. Wow. You're a transphobic. That's not the case here. Right. And for these ladies to not want to compete with, um, the, the, the trans women that essentially beat them in track is not transphobia. It's just, it is an unfair balance. Right. And I do agree with that. So that's, that's, Mm -hmm. that's my point. Yeah. I mean, I, I, in, in any case, you're going to be damned if you do or damned if you don't, I think, because it feels like what's what's right is not always fair, and what's fair is not always right. And that's this is a clear example of that. Sure, it's the right thing to do. Is it the fairest thing to do? No, 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 not by a long shot. So, what what what's the answer? Well, I would say having a extra an an extra um, well, and how do you call that? Like a like, a, like a, a, an extra division like, or an extra like a yeah, an ex- division exactly let's call it a division so like an extra division of uh so we have male runners female runners trans trans women runners trans men runners yeah again is it going to cost more yeah and i can see already something that they would be against possibly and that would be highlighting the difference because I think a lot of these people, like particularly a lot of people in the trans community, they just want to be accepted as the sex that they are transitioning to. So that that's that's the main problem I see probably they might have. You know what I mean? Sure. And listen, I, I respect anyone. And we're talking about right now strictly comp- competing, right? Sports. More than anything, sports, right? Yeah. And we're, we're talking about the disadvantages that exist, right? If we're talking about something like, eh, let's just see here, chess, this wouldn't be, and I'm literally talking about chess, like the board game. Mm-hmm. This doesn't apply here. My, my argument is no in that case, right? I'm not going to sit here and be like, well, no, you should still apply to everything outside of sports. No, I'm not going to go that far because I'm not an extremist. Okay. I, I, I mean, here in sports, Trans women, because historically, and in, in, in looking at everything that I'm showing here, and I'm going to show one more, right, to just know the, the point home. Trans women can be much better than women, right? We're not talking about, like, the trans are on TikTok, about, oh, if you're a man, if you come out and you said you won't date a trans woman, you're a transphobic. That's a whole other conversation, which I also don't agree mm-hmm. with, Okay. Can an, a, a trans woman have the, the same rights, right, legally speaking, as a woman? Sure. 
you know, because at the end, those really should be just human rights, right? The, 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 the right to pursue happiness, to, to make a living, all that should be, yeah, I'm on board with all that. You know, trans women hold, you know, hold, hold, uh, any position in a company. Yeah, sure. They can be CEOs and everything. There's no different, really. They're human. But in this particular case in sports, it changes everything simply because of biological facts, right? It's just, it's mm-hmm. what it is. Now, can anybody argue? Oh, well, what about like tiny little men that, you know, they're like, you know, I don't know, like they're like four feet tall, super, super thin, you know, that can barely lift. I don't know uh you know themselves okay you're you're you you know now you're you're trying to spit hairs you know you're using extreme examples because I'm, I'm i'm bringing it up by the way because i saw it as a comment you know i met tons mm. of of you know you know scrawny little guys sure just like they're scrawny little women you know they're called petite women and then there's um you know oh really really you know to the opposite really naturally bulky strong women just like there's naturally really strong bulky men it, you're, you're going, you know, at extremes. We're just trying to generalize here because not all scrawny little men will will transition to women, right? Anyone can transition either to either side. So we have to understand here because it is open to everyone and anyone that chooses to do it. Do we start, like you were saying a minute ago, should we start considering maybe different weight classes, which we already do in mm-hmm. things like boxing, but, you know, should we consider it? Because, hey, I don't know that it would be smart to put, like they did in that cage, a biological woman with a trans woman and look at the result. Here's another example for you guys, all right? Coming out of the Daily Mail. Let me open up the screen a little bit more there. Boom, right there, all right? Free advertisement. You're welcome for Woody's Clung Glasses. Uh, Daily Mail, all right? God, it won't go away. Look at that freaking ad. Outraged, the title says, over transgender female weightlifter who destroyed her rivals by hosting, hosting me, 19 kilograms more than the runner-up, and now she's a contender for the uh, Commonwealth Games. So bullet points are Laurel uh, Humbard made her international debut as a Melbourne on Sunday. Ms. Uh, Hubbard, who transitioned at her 30s, won her weight division by 19 okay 19 kilograms for those of you guys don't know that the um whatever the the equivalent in but pounds it's like over 40 pounds right uh, it led in, to an outrage from some aussies who claim that the playing field wasn't even but others defend miss uh, hubbard who has passed the ioc's criteria so there's a whole video. You guys can watch it. Uh, I don't want to play another video, but here, for those of you guys uh, tuning in on the podcast, uh, it's a very tall woman who clearly has the physique of a man, right? Long hair and everything. And when you see her standing next to other women, right? Because I saw the full picture. Uh, it's, she's not standing at like really uh, even heights. Like she is considerably taller. Than women, she's a really tall woman who who used to be a man, and was able to lift forty more pounds. We're not talking about like oh, you know, she beat the women by like a pound or two, even ten pounds, forty pounds. But let's just take the obvious thing here. It's not the same, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. Now, if you disagree, please with facts. Not that you know before you go on and try to insult any of us because you you, you know you disagree that passionately with me or Josh. In the comment section, let us know why. Why is it that you think it should be no different if you disagree with us? Now, if you agree with us, you know, don't forget to like the video. But listen, this is not about discriminating against trans women. I'm happy for them. Go ahead. Nobody should be forced to live like Caitlyn Jenner did for many years, according to her own story, in Bruce's Jenner's, you know, identity. I'm happy for her. Go, 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 go do you, boo boo. I'm happy for you. Right? If I saw you in the street, I would say, hey, Caitlin, I'm not an asshole. I wouldn't be, hey, Bruce. No, that is homophobia and that is transphobia. I'm not going to, I don't partake in any of that garbage, right? But is it the same in sports? No. There is where I draw the line because there is a line to draw, at least for me. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm, I completely agree. I mean, in society, yeah, it should be 100% equal. When it comes to sports, well, there are some obvious advantages that certain genders have over the other. And that's why 
men and women don't compete peak together period that that's all it comes down to it's just we have to we have to recognize that this is a very particular situation that should be treated differently because well we haven't really faced up to it because this is the first time in our society we are starting to recognize trans people as their own gender you know it's not just something that's swept under the rug anymore so what do we need to do we need to be able to well i think what would probably be best is if they did have their own league you know like if they did have a, a trans league not only would companies like nike like adidas like all these huge companies that make sportswear they would be so quick like a fly on crap to try and buy into this because how woke would they be seen if they're the ones who are if they're the ones who are paying for i don't know um the trans league of basketball or trans hockey or trans running or whatever yeah, sponsorships and stuff like that yeah exactly imagine that so this is not a discussion whether a trans woman can do everything a woman can in terms of uh whatever you think traditionally women do this is about should trans women compete with women and the answer me I'll, I'll be very clear no i don't believe so does my opinion matter probably not probably the sports and the woke will continue being who they are and i sincerely hope that somehow i am wrong and it drives women because that's another argument i've heard to be more competitive and to beat these trans women and to show that they are equals i hope i'm wrong i hope that happens is it likely I don't know. You tell me. Things like this have been happening for quite a while. And case after case have come out of trans women just being better in sports than trans, than I'm sorry, than, than, than biological women. And they win top prizes. Right? I just showed you a weightlifting competition, track, and MMA. And in all these cases, that they didn't happen the same year in the same country or by the same athlete. This just spread out. You have case after case. But again, I feel a lot of the times, by the way, that uh, we have to go to really big extremes for people to maybe start using that critical thinking and saying, oh, maybe we shouldn't go down that road, right? Like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what an extreme case would be, but I feel like it has to get to that point, right? Mm -hmm. Before we actually are open to 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 facts, period. Um, but anyways, that's, uh, yeah, that's those are all the, the stories any any last thoughts no that's it really i mean like it's it's always tough to do what's right but it's even tougher to do what's fair i guess you could say right oh, good one all right guys that's it for today uh hope you guys enjoy leave us a, a comment down below why why do you disagree with us if you disagree with us if you don't uh, i definitely want to hear from you either way right we definitely want to hear if you think uh you know, maybe we missed something, right? Or if you agree with us as well, don't forget to like the video. And if you're not listening on the podcast, uh, you know, please go download it. It really helps the show as well. And what ultimately, like, the ultimate help to the show is if you are willing to join the membership program here on uh, on YouTube. Uh, you have no idea how much that would mean to me. Uh, but anyways, that's it for today. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And until next time, see ya.